Hello and welcome to Home of Origins podcast. So this is episode 6 and it's the third part of Impersonment and it's about her strong faith in God and how she humbly gave her crown to keep her promise for being liberated and also her speech to say thank you to the Almighty Lord and to encourage unity. If you are interested to know about her early years of life and her contributions towards supporting women and social empowerment, as well as humanitarian actions, please check the previous episodes, which is episode 4 and episode 5 of Home of Origins podcast, Satan. When Empress Manon was exiled from Ethiopia during the Italian occupation from 1936 to 1941, she made a place to the Virgin Mary at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, promising to give her crown to the Church if Ethiopia were liberated from occupation. The Empress made numerous trips to holy sites in British Old Palestine, in Syria and in Lebanon during her exile to pray for her occupied homeland. Following the return of Emperor Haile Selassie and his family to Ethiopia in 1941, a replica of the crown was made for future empresses, but the original crown that Empress Menon was crowned with at her husband's side in 1930, was sent to the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. Afterwards, Imperial Manon, also often seen wearing a tiara at public events, as she decided to never wear a full crown again. On her return to Ethiopia, the Empress made the following speech through Prince Sahai during a visit to the Wolo province. Princess Zahai made speech as follows. First of all, I would like to thank the Almighty Lord for which our flag is replaced. Our patriots came back with the victory staying in a bush for five years. Secondly, any human being may have a great pleasure when he or she join with her or his birthplace. With the grace of God, I was eager to see my native place Wollo. I am very happy as I am with you after 31 years. Next, I am very grateful for the people who received me with great pleasure. All of you know that this naturally gifted country which is green and different from any African countries, have never been under colony and have been ruled only by its own kings. After many trials, Italy made propaganda warfare since they cannot control before, though this campaign tried to dismiss our unity and divide our people. Is there anyone who did not miss his relative during this war? Some of our citizens were killed by horse, spade and machine guns. God made it possible that Ethiopia won its enemy quickly. We, the citizens' children, feel proud when we see our country freed from any aggression and we are very thankful to Almighty God. Ethiopian people have got the good lesson from the past experience, which enables us to collaborate as one mother's children love each other. This made every Ethiopian to struggle for the country's independence and freedom. You have seen that people without freedom is victim as this was seen during five year aggression. Indeed, our people did not hate native rulers as far as they kept the language, custom and tradition of the people. But Italians tried to rule in a subtle way during the aggression 
Even though the enemy killed our people, patriots went to the bush and some went abroad in exile. The situation surprised the world. My native ladies and gentlemen of Wallo, our country has been free since 3,000 years back. However, through the help of England and fierce struggle of its children, we freed our country, the flag and the king for our common motherland Ethiopia. We have to be one and united. The prince crown is selected and came up from you. Our beloved son, Prince Merida as much as Fawasen, is with you. Even though I was separated for 31 years physically, it is impossible to say that I was living, alienated myself from you. I was with you spiritually. Our beloved son is your governor. I believe you may be very happy when I tell you this information. You may service him loyally and kindly. On the other hand, he may share your problems and help you. He may administer you through good justice. Please give him advice and assist him anytime. Let God keep our fertile country. Let God make it possible. Long live to our flag. Empress Menon performed perfectly in the role of Empress Consort. In her public role, she combined religious devotions, concern for social causes, and support for development outlines, with the majesty of her imperial status. Outwardly, she was a well-behaved wife visiting schools, churches, exhibitions, and model farms attending public and state events at her husband's side or by herself. She took no public stand on political or policy issues. Behind the scene, however, she was the emperor's most trusted advisor, quietly offering advice on a whole range of issues. She avoided the publicly political role that her predecessor as Empress Consort Empress Aitu Betul have taken, which had caused deep resentment in government circle during the regime of Minilik II. In April 18, 1949, she celebrated the 25th anniversary of Empress Menen School. On this celebration, there were a lot of people. The school had shown progress and gave the chance for all girls to be educated. On this occasion, she extended her message through Tafaraurg to the gathered people. His Imperial Majesty King of Kings believed that there is nothing better for the development of country's progress and development except education. In this regard, on his willingness, he built many schools for boys. But if girls are left behind without having regular education, may have disadvantage. Therefore, I have opened his school for the merit of girls for the 25 years since I believe girls should learn as boys. These schools were discontinued by the invasion of enemy against Ethiopia while it was process its own ongoing objectives. By the grace of God, the school resumed its function after the victory. May girls have got the chance to be promoted as the higher level of education after graduation in this school. Many of them are working in the government offices and in private organizations. If my country's girls get a chance to learn the standard education I hoped they can contribute a lot, which is expected from them as their brothers. There were no more than 50 students before 25 years when the school was opened, but today there are about 
1,300 students. This number is increasing because girls are aware of the advantage of education. I am very happy to see to this progress. I thank the Almighty God for which I celebrate the 25th of impressment in school. I thank the director of this school and lady teachers for which they shared the problem of the school and the progress of the school. Following her death in 1962, the Empress was buried in the crypt of Holy Trinity Cathedral in Addis Ababa among the tombs of her children. There was a tribute to her charity, her devotedness and her role as advisor and helpmate to the Emperor, as well as her personal kindness and goodness. On her third day memorial after the funeral, the Emperor himself paid tribute to his wife by saying that although the Prime Minister had properly described what kind of person his late wife has been, he wanted to say that during their five decades of marriage, not once had it been necessary to have the third party mediate between him and his wife, and that their marriage had been one of the peace and mutual support. That was what I have for part three of Impressment and Story. So that's what we have for today. Um, so please stay connected. If you have any suggestions or comments, you can email us at info at ethiopianismwithz.com. For now, I'd like to say thank you and hope to see you soon in the next episode. Have a great day, everyone.